everyone. Welcome back to the messiest shop in the world. All right. Uh, what we're going to go over today is everything that went wrong with that maiden flight. All right. The plane is outside. I got my big 12 foot canopy out because it's going to be a hot, miserable day outside. It would be much nicer in here where I've got air conditioning. The shop is too small for the wings. So I had to move everything outside. I uh, even got an overhead camera set up because there's a couple things we're going to be discussing today. Uh, first and foremost, the engine. I'm going to show you a picture right here. Uh, the problem with the engine was, the reason why it died is because that little tube that used to be attached to the crankcase uh, popped off. And that popped off before that flight. I realized when I was fighting the engine, um, there was a little bit of oil coming on the uh, coming off the bottom of the muffler. And I'm trying to figure out where's that coming from until I was refiring that engine up after it seized. Um, I turned it upside down to pull the spark plug out to go ahead and uh, just put some fuel oil, fuel oil mixture down inside uh, the cylinder. And the reason why I had to pour the gas and oil down there was because when you have an engine seize, it, you, have it, or you have an oil soak down on the cylinder walls. It gets so hot, everything drains through and there's pretty much nothing left. So I had to go ahead and put that in there, let the, the fuel and oil seep down past everything. Um, and then it was rotating over nicely. And that little crunchiness at the top and the bottom was almost completely gone, just putting the oil in there. So the engine itself is good. All right, so what I've got here is I have that little piece of tubing. And I don't know if you can see it. This, was the, this is the oil soaked end. This was far too thick, uh, the inside diameter, and it popped off very easily. So as soon as the oil hit this part of it down by the crankcase, it just blew it off. Um, so I went in, I came in with some a hose of my own that has a, uh, that has a thinner inside diameter. Um, then what was put on there and put it on and that thing you can't pull it off with a pair of pliers You have to cut it with a razor knife and then pull it off. So so we're good to go on this um, Fired up the engine ran the engine for about an hour and a half had still had tons of compression on it And there was not a single issue um, With the with the motor it's high and low. I ran it everywhere from idle to a third throttle uh, half throttle even full throttle uh, for you know a couple minutes at a time and just kept circulating it through uh, and everything was really nice so what I did was when I got it set up for the final because I'm gonna be putting the cowling back on today too um, I just richened it up just a little teeny bit uh, just on the high end because the low end was good and like I said in videos in the past the low end affects the high end but the high end doesn't affect the low end so what I did was I came on in and put another hole right there on the bottom just to get a little bit more air circulating past the cylinder head up and in and so uh, with all that we should be really good with with temperature too and I will be testing that before uh, I go ahead and fly the plane again now what I'm gonna do is I've got it around here somewhere I've got some paint pens I'm gonna come in and on the high end and the low end needle, I'm gonna go ahead and put some paint on it just so that way when I look through the little teeny hole in the side, which I made a little bit bigger and made it round, um, you're gonna be able to see the high end and the low end. So you know if you're to make an adjustment, you're not just hunting and pecking on the inside with hoping that, that you can find it. Uh, you'll just be able to look through the little hole and see it. So we should be good there too. So let me go ahead and get the cameras moved outside and let me show you what we're gonna do next. All right, we're gonna start this video off is getting a proper center of gravity on it because I just kind of came in and did a real piecemeal one, which I knew was gonna be close, but I was trying to get it just a little bit nose heavy. That way it'd be better to have it a little nose heavy than tail heavy. And we thought we were taking off tail heavy and we weren't, which we'll be covering as soon as I get done talking about this. All right, uh, it's a candy bar wing. If you look at it, it's pretty much the cord is constant all the way down the length of it 
but because it's swept, the CG for that wing is going to be in a different location. Uh, for those of you that have never done a swept wing, it's called the, uh, the MAC, the MAC. Uh, that's, so what you're trying to do is you're find, trying to find out where you should be making the measurements uh, to find out where the CG is really going to end up with. Now, I already came in, I already did all the measurements, so I do have a camera right up there, right there, um, just to see if I can give you guys a good indication of how to do it. Um, now, with the candy bar wing, um, if you want to get it set up 25%, 30%, 33 35 wherever you want to, that's going to be the percentage from the leading edge of the wing. Now, with a swept wing, um, if it's a tapered swept wing, it's completely different. You're still following the same parameters, but it's different. Um, so that, if you guys want to see something on swept wings, you let me know. Uh, I can kind of put together a quick little two, three minute video just to, just to explain how to do that. But with a candy bar wing, all you want to do is you're just going to pretty much find the middle of each wing half. Because what you can do is on a candy bar wing, uh, if you wanted to find out where it, you pretty much just draw an X. So from here would be the leading edge all the way down to the trailing edge at the, at the ribs. And just kind of go from the root rib all the way out to the last rib. The wing tip is not a true lifting surface, but it's really close to it. Um, so for here, we're looking about 37 inches. Um, now with that 37 inches, you're coming in, you're going 18 and a half. That's halfway. So what I did on this is I came right in and I did make a mark. You can't see it, but it's right here. That is my halfway mark. So then what I did is I came across the top of this with just a piece of masking tape. And then from here, in line with the masking tape, because it's still at a slant, so even though you're going this way, I came back and I measured in the 30%. And I set it up at 30, but I'm going to load it heavy at 30. So it's going to be nose down at heavy uh, because that way if I wanted to make a change in it, I could just remove a little bit of weight in a nose uh, with the lead. Because as you could probably see, there's no lead up here. I had to take it all out and it's almost perfect the way it is. So what I did is I came back and I measured out 30% and made a mark here. I also did it on the other wing. And then I came in with my affectionately known with my four foot yardstick uh, and just came in and just put it across the top and came in and the mark is right here. So that is where the 30% of this wing really is. It's not up here, it's back here. Then what I did is I took the same measurement from the leading edge here, back to there was 120 millimeters because the bottom wing has the same nose up on the front, it's flat. Uh, just to fit in the fuselage. So I came 120 millimeters back and made marks. You can't see them. They're down here on the side on the bottom. And then from that point, I just came in with a piece of balsa and just kept trimming it till I can get it. So it was from the, from the bottom wing, from the 120 millimeter uh, up to the 120 millimeter on the bottom of the top wing. So the top of the bottom wing, bottom of top wing. And then I made a mark on the side of the fuselage halfway. So, all right, I figured I'd get my phone out and show you the other one. So there is the mark in the center. And I don't know if we can see it, probably not. Uh, but there is a mark up on the top. And so I just came in, drew a diagonal from there to that part. And that little line right there is where the CG needs to be. So where the CG is going to be is right here on this bar, just behind the bar. So if I was up at 25%, It'd be probably much at the front part of that bar, 33 is back here. So that is going to be a really good point to see exactly how everything is, uh, is balanced. Now, if I pick it up from the point right now, it's just a little bit tail heavy. So it's not going to take that much lead to put that tail up where I want it. So CG, we're pretty darn good. All right, now the problem we had with having to put so much down elevator, it was probably, I don't know, five eighths, three quarters of an inch down elevator. It was a lot. Um, because we knew the CG was on, we've got two degrees of down thrust on the motor. Um, there's two options. The first one would be to go ahead and cut the whole tail off and put one to two degrees of up on the horizontal stabilized elevator, which we're not gonna do that because this was set up true to scale. It's just that it's not adjustable on this plane. Um, so what we're gonna have to do, because the bottom wing is already set at positive two degrees incidence, 
this is supposed to be set at zero. What I did is for those of you that have watched the channel for a while, what I do is every plane, especially every biplane I put together, I make one of these. It's a, it's a board, it's a measuring board, and it's designed to fit right on the top of the wing. And because both of these wings are the same, you can use this as reference. If I went down to the bottom wing and set it up and it showed that it was positive two degrees, because <clears throat> I'm not worried about getting the plane level. Because what I can do is that with a little smart level, donated by a good friend of mine, Johnny, or, you know, whenever he wants to come take it back, it's his. Um, so what I could do with that one is I can set it down. And if it's, if it's not even at, you know, positive two degrees, I'll just zero it out. So the bottom wing is going to be my reference wing because that's the one I can't change. So then if I set that at zero, then this needs to be at negative two degrees from the initial setup. So if this thing was set up right, this should be at negative two degrees to that wing. If it's not, what I'm going to have to do is rotate this wing another degree or two down. So, so it's going to go down to either negative three or negative four degrees. So I'm, I'm hoping that the top wing is a little bit wrong uh, because if it's right on and I tilt that down, how far do I want to go? As much as I'd like to go just one degree, I'll probably set it up at two degrees. Uh, the only problem I have with this is the end struts have already been made and I can't make adjustments to them. So I went and got some more aluminum. Um, and what I may do, I know that the back one, because it's longer than the front, I should be able to shorten, I'm hoping, shorten the front one, to be, the back one to become the front one, and then just make a new rear one. Uh, and then of course the diagonal, I'll have to make two new ones, but those are relatively easy. So let me go ahead and get everything set up and make some measurements, and then I'll bring you guys back and let you know exactly where we're sitting. All right, I know you guys can't see it. I've got the bottom wing zeroed out. So I came on in, reset it, recalculated the level, and you can't see it, but we are at 0.0, .0 degrees. I come all the way up to the top wing in the same location, and I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it. We are at 1.1 degrees. So I need to tilt it down one more degree to get us back to that two degrees of down, which is what they what they were looking for. So I could probably go two and a half degrees, but let me at least get it down to the two. And then on the next flight, we'll see how much that's gonna affect the tail. Um, but that one degree can be huge because what you're doing is you're getting so much lift from the bottom wing, if you're not trying to balance out that lift off the top wing, so it's gonna be more of a neutral uh, in motion forward, um, you're going to have the thing do what this plane wanted to do. It just under speed and everything. It just wanted to c continue to climb up. So it was fine at lower speeds, but at higher speeds, it was getting more lift off of it. So that's why I had to keep throwing more trim in for the, for the normal flying speed. So let me go ahead and figure out, I'm going to have to redo the end struts because I had to put the end struts back on again. Um, and so then what I'll do is I'll go ahead and get this set up so that it's at pretty much two degrees of down. Um, and then at that point, it's just going to be a bunch of measuring to see what I'm going to have to do to make this work. Now, I may still, and I hope I still have them and have not cut them apart and used them. Uh, the original struts that came with this had slots cut in them. So that way you can get everything adjusted properly and my goal is to sorry it's getting windy in here now um, which is why I'm not flying today because the wind's supposed to be gusts up to 30 so I'm gonna try to get this done and get this whole thing broken down before it gets too bad out here so what I'll do is if I have the ones that are adjustable as soon as I get this set up properly because it was originally set up so that it was uh, at zero degrees to the thrust line so who knows it could be because when i did it, it wood could have been a little with moisture in it and then of course when i use nitrate dope and cover that could have affected the whole thing too uh, but as of right now let me find those slotted ones hopefully i've got them uh go ahead get everything set up so it, it is it will be at zero degrees to the thrust line or negative two degrees from the bottom wing and then i'll go ahead and start making measurements and let's uh let's cut some new struts all right, what I did is I went into the shop and I cut some strips of Luan. That's, I don't know, probably 
three eighths inch by what is it like quarter inch luon or something uh just cut it and made measurements and the way i made measurements were i went ahead because i do have some stock 330 seconds basswood uh came in cut it so that it was it was close enough to uh to hit with a little magic marker and then what i did was i uh, came over here and yes, I use metric because metric is the way the world works. And for some reason, we have a hard time over here in the United States with metrics. I like metrics. All right. So what I did is I came over. So you can see I'm right at zero. And then I measured out on this. This was the, this was for the rear struts, uh, 288 uh, millimeters. And then what I did was the other side was the other. The other side was the other side. So we got the right and the left. This one came in at 285. And because I'm still trying to get the wing to match from side to side, because this side, this was at 2.3 degrees. That one was at 1.7. So what I did is I made the rear one the same exact size. And what did it do? That's 2.3, that's 2.3. So uh, so we're good on this, because this ended up being, when I zeroed it out, it kept coming back at 0.1. So 2.2 down. So I'm good with this. So we should be, uh, we should see the large difference in the way this thing flies. Uh, so what I'll do is, since these two are the same, I'll do what I did on the last two. I know exactly where to cut these things out. So I'll just make two out of uh, aluminum and I'm gonna make them thinner. Uh, they didn't need to be as thick as I made them. So I'm gonna make them pretty close to this size now instead of this size. So, and that'll, take uh take up a little bit of weight and this stuff is not going anywhere uh, because where this is flexible this stuff is not really flexible much so at all so so i'm just going to go ahead and thin this down it'll be lighter um and just anything to help save some weight because i have to go ahead and here's the pilot that's going to reside inside the plane his name is harry I'm not telling you his last name yet. You'll catch it. You'll find out what his last name is later on. Uh, and this is from Aces of Iron. And I've got to paint him up. And that's going to be probably the way you paint these things. It's probably going to be a, a week, two week long process because you're working with uh, regular oil based paints, acrylic enamels, and also lacquer. So it'll be fun. But uh, you should be a good looking pilot. I got to I got to sit him up proud about that high up so i've got to build a base for him to sit on uh so right now when i weigh everything out i'll just get a piece of uh, i'll probably get a little piece of foam block just to set him up he'll be a little bit heavier um, but i want to make sure that he's weighed into the plane so right now what i plan on doing because these things just have to be uh pretty much cut out uh, filed down because I don't have a sander that can sand it as good as I want it to. So I'll just hit it with a with a with a regular flat file. Get everything sanded down uh, and ready to paint. I can even spray them up today because I want to have this plane done today, ready to fly. So that's why I figure I'll spend the whole day out here. So you guys don't need to see me cut those things, but I will be putting it all back together again. And once I get it all balanced out, I'll bring you back just to show you uh, how everything hopefully will be and how well it's gonna fly. All right, it's been a very long day. Started this morning at 7.30, getting everything set up, and it's 4.30, uh, plane's done, it's all balanced out. Harry's in the back right now, waiting to be painted. That's gonna be, uh, gonna probably be somewhere on down the road. Um, it would have been a very nice day to get a flight in this morning, and about 10 o'clock, the wind and the clouds came in so it's a good thing that i had something planned so anyway uh everything is done i got the uh i got more lead put up in the front so what i did uh for balance up in the nose uh i took a piece of uh a two inch two and a half inch pvc cut a small section out about yay big uh put some balsa plank on either side of it uh just took out some oil lubed up the inside of it just so that it wouldn't stick um, and then I mixed up, it was five ounces of uh, number eight birdshot. Uh, I buy that stuff in bulk. Um, not for shooting, but for ballast. That's what I use in my planes and all my sail planes. 
Um, so that's, uh, that's the reason why I've got, you know, it's like three and a half pounds of it. So, but it works out very nicely. Uh, so it was, it was five ounces of lead and then I mixed it in with a uh, 30 minute epoxy. So that is sitting in underneath the cowling with a little teeny bit of a curve, just so it's not going to get in the way of anything. Um, and then to get it set up for Harry, um, I put another three quarter ounce, uh, all the way up front. I, just to screw in it is a little bit and you'll see right now it's a little bit on the nose heavy side I'm okay with that it's it's easy for me to take that little three-quarter ounce out and just go down to the 5.2 um, because we had a really good balance so before I go any farther let me show you the balance and as you will notice the tail should be sitting high when I pick it up so we're it's it's not it's not level it's just a little bit above level so uh that that should be very good make for really stable flights and uh whoa sorry earthquake and it's a uh it's a good place to start because i still don't know how it's going to work with the tail uh, i went ahead moved the elevator back up um, to the point where i'm hoping that that's where it's going to want to stay um because uh, the other part of the maiden flight um never had to trim the elevators period or the rudder so it was all it was all with the balance of the plane um and that was in accordance with the wings so the wings are set uh the bottom wing was zero and the top wing was uh 2.2 or 2.3 degrees down uh both sides so i was happy with that and we're just going to go with it uh, if I wanted to make an adjustment to it, I could probably do it easy enough if I just took the, uh, the end struts up on the front and uh, just made one hole a little bit bigger just to it. So if I did go ahead and readjust it back, uh, because I'm going to try not to do anything with this. I'm hoping it's going to fly nice just the way it is. So before I call it a day and uh, break everything down, I'm going to get it back out on the ground, throw some fuel in it, and it'll be, I'll be off camera. Uh, and fire it up and just see how things go with the engine temperature because I still got my little uh, my little digital thermometer. Um, so I'll go ahead and check that out and see where it's sitting after about five minutes of running. And assuming everything is good, then we're just going to call it done. And if it's not, I will just have to go ahead and take it apart and figure out what I'm going to do next. So let's just go ahead and call this a video and I will see you guys next time. I'm back down in the shop.